Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to upload a picture to S3 using React and GraphQL. Now if you don't know what S3 is, it is a service by Amazon that allows you to store pictures or files. It's really nice and great for applications where you might have users uploading lots of images and you want to store them somewhere. So let me show you an example of how it works and then we'll dive into the code to make this happen. So right here I have a little form that I can fill out. So I'm gonna give him a name and I'm gonna upload an image here. And then I'm gonna hit submit. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna submit the form um, to my server and also upload this to S3. So it's pulling the image from S3 and we have this text right here coming from our database. So let's see how this was made and how we actually made a request to S3 to actually store the image. So first, I'm going to show you the front-end code to make this happen. And right here is our upload page. So this is the form that we have, um, the drop zone, uh, which is the little thing where I can upload a file. And then when I upload a file, we call this on drop. And all we're doing in on drop is saving this file to our state. And then when I hit submit, what's happening? Uh, when I click the submit button, we're calling the submit function right here. And this is the core of the action so right here we upload to s3 and we're calling a mutation but first i want to show you the uh, actual graphql so here they're running two mutations um, first to get what's called an s3 signature so to actually to upload it to s3 what i'm using is a url i don't actually don't know how to uh, my client doesn't know how to upload it to s3 what happens is i hit my server and I say, hey, I'd like to upload an image. And uh, I basically tell it the file name of the image I want to upload and the file type. And what's going to happen is it returns, um, the server is going to return a URL and a sign request that I can then use to make a request to AWS and to S3 to actually upload the image itself. So what the, the flow of this is, is I make a request to my server to get the signed URL. I then upload this to S3. And then I create the champion using the picture URL we get from S3 um, and store it in the database to be used for later. So that's what the two mutations are here for. This guy for getting the URL, this one for submitting after we've uploaded it to S3. That way we can store it in the database itself and reference it later. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual code that's getting run here. So of course I'm just grabbing the name of the file the name and the file. So the file name is different from name. This is just the name of my champion object. Um, so file, the first thing I'm gonna pass in are uh, the variables. So I'm getting the file.name. This is something that the user provides. Um, this is just the default name of their file, and then the file type we're passing in as variables. Now you'll notice I'm calling this function called format file name, and that's right here. And the reason for that is I just like to format my files for um, S3, the, the naming of them, and also there's some restrictions. So I'm basically like just cleaning the name and then putting a nice little uh, uh, date and uh, cleaning it off so it's not too long. So here's what I do. I first grab the date in this format. I'm using moment.js for this. Um, this is just a date library, but you could also just use regular date in JavaScript. Then I'm generating a random string here. Um, and then here I'm getting rid of anything, uh, any bad characters in the, uh, the, like the first file name that they named it. So, and then I'm replacing all those with dashes. So I'm getting rid of spaces, anything that would cause uh, problems in the string. And, and this is a regular expression where I'm saying anything that's not a uh, uppercase A and Z, or sorry, lowercase A and Z, or uh, zero through nine, we get rid of and we're lower casing this so there's not a problem. And then I'm generating a new file name and I'm storing this in a images folder in my S3 bucket. And then here's how I'm building the file name. I'm putting the date, a random string, and the cleaned file name. So this is just me building a unique name for the file that I'm uploading to S3. And then I return just the substring because it can't be longer than 60 characters. Or I think it might be a few more characters, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, so it doesn't, it's not too long. So that's all, just naming the file here. Um, and then after that, I actually do the upload. Um, so we're getting back, we're 
we just got that the signed URL so we know what we're supposed to make a post request to. So we use this signed request and this URL that we get back from our server and we upload it to S3. So this is another function, I'll show you that right here. Um, so I take the file and the signed request and I just make a put request and I just upload the file and I'm just passing what the file type is in the header. So that's all that's going on to upload to S3. We just need to use the URL that was signed and I'll show you guys how we're actually signing the uh, making the signed request in the back end in a minute. So that'll upload it to S3 and then this URL is actually um, where the uh, file will be once it's uploaded. You'll notice our sign request generates that for us. Um, so after that what we do is we save that URL that we get here in our database. So this is just create champions as a normal regular uh, database model. We're saving the name and the picture URL in our database and then we're pushing to a new page. So we're pushing over to this champion page in this champion page, all we do is we make a GraphQL query to get the champion, and then we're, sh we're just rendering the name and the picture URL. That's all. This picture URL is coming from S3, and the name is just the name of the champion. So that's what's going on, on the front end, and let me show you what's happening on the back end. So here's my resolver. This is actually sign S3, but before I get into more about how this works, let me show you the schema. So here I just have a type S3 payload, which has a signed request in your URL. They're both strings. And then I have a mutation here called sign S3, which takes a file name and a file type and generates that payload back. Pretty simple. So let's look at the resolver that does this. So to do this resolver, we need to use the uh, AWS SDK. So if I scroll up to the top here, you'll notice I am importing the AWS SDK. This is another um, package that we need to use. And you also notice we need a couple environment variables. Um, you don't have to store your bucket as an environment variable. This is just something that I do, uh, makes it easy. You could just store this as a string, but the actual name of your S3 bucket you need. Uh, and I just store it on a variable up here because I use it a couple of different places. Um, and also you wanna make sure there's two uh, environment variables, AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key um, that you are storing. So these you can get on the AWS console and uh, make sure you store them. So I have a .m file where I set them um, and that way they're available because this AWS SDK uses these two to actually make the request. Um, and then here I'm just creating, basically initializing the object and I'm saying which region it's in. I'm in US East 2 and then the version you want to put V4. And then here we put the parameters for creating this signed request. So I pass in the S3 bucket, the file name um, that was supplied, the file type, and then the ACL. I forget what ACL is. I think it has something to do with permissions. And we want it to be anyone can be able to read it, so we do public read. And then expires means how long they have to actually send the request after we create this URL. So. I believe this is seconds, so we're giving them 60 seconds once they have uploaded. So this URL that we, this signed request that we pass back, it expires in 60 seconds. So if the user doesn't upload, the, if our client, our React uh, code doesn't upload in the next 60 seconds, it will actually, um, the signed request will invalidate because it's been too long. And then we just create the sign request using um, the S3 object we created right here. So the AWS SDK is doing all the work for us and we want to put the object there um, uh, and we're basically uploading an image. So we put, we put an object and then here const URL, uh, we're just creating the URL from the S3 bucket and then the file name. And that's how you create the file name right there and the URL that's gonna be stored at. And then we just return this back and that's what our client uses. So that is how you create a sign request. And now, and you actually uh, then have the client. And the nice thing about this is your client doesn't have any of your AWS credentials and stuff. So you don't expose that to anyone. So this is a way to keep it secure. And so no one can sign things or no one can upload to your S3 unless they have a signed URL. So you can protect this endpoint right here 
Like for example, I could um, only allow people that I want to. So I could put permissions on this actual GraphQL endpoint. Kind of how I do requires auth.createResolver. I could say this requires auth or this requires some special privilege that I check before letting someone use it. Now, there's also some things you can do in the um, console for AWS, and I'll show you guys that. So this is what my AWS console looks like for S3. Here's my bucket policy, and I'll show you my cores configuration in a second. Um, I honestly am not very experienced with how permissions works on S3, so I'm not sure too much how this works. But basically what I want to allow is people to upload images and view images. So that's what I tried to do with my bucket policy and my cores configuration, and it does work. Um, but I'm not sure if it's too open. This is something I need to spend more time on, like tuning and figuring out for sure. What you'll notice here, uh, this is my bucket name. So um, this is what I have for dinner, actually. But uh, so you can switch out uh, your, your bucket name right here, um, and you could copy this bucket policy. And here's the course configuration. So you can actually allow only certain websites. Like I could just allow localhost 3001 here. Um, but I'm allowing everyone, actually sorry, it's up here, allowed origin. Um, so there's different ones, and then here are the different operations you allow. So those are the two things you can also change, and there's also access lists and other things, other permissions you can change on S3 that um, can go more into depth with depth into how much you wanna secure your application. But that should be a good starting point and give you an idea of how you can start uploading files to S3, storing them over there, and then keeping the URL in the database so you can actually reference it and show the, your, the uh, pictures on your website. So that is it for this video, guys. The code for both the front end and the back end will be up on GitHub, and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out any of it and give it a try. So thanks for watching.